My name is Captain Aletha Henderson and I am a firefighter with the Indianapolis Fire Department and I have a great book that I would love to share with you. In fact, it's one of my favorites. This book is a fire safety book that I'm sure you and your family will love. I have a few friends that would like to also help me read this book to you. What do you say? You have a few minutes? Let's get started. No dragons for tea. One warm sunny day at the end of last week, my mom and I went for a walk to the creek. As I raced down the hill in my little red wagon, I veered to the left and smacked into a dragon. I suppose he could see there was fear in my eyes as I jumped to my feet quite fear filled with surprise. He sheepishly grinned and stepped out of the way, but he seemed so polite that I asked him to play. He had a cute bear and some other toys too. With my shovel and pail, we had oodles to do. We ran to the creek and then on to the bay where we played on the beach for the rest of the day. Then mom waved and said, now it's time to go eat. Let's pack the red wagon and head up the street. It's hard to stop playing with friends new or old. So I asked if the dragon could come eat too. Mom wrinkled her brow and squinted her eyes, looking up at the dragon's incredible size. I begged and I pleaded, then said very sweet, we won't make a mess, we'll be tidy and neat. So at last she said, yes, just this once I'll agree. You may have the dragon come over for tea. Wait, Rory, is that you? Is that you? I think Rory's here and he'd like to share it with you too. Yes, Captain Henderson, I can hear you. My name is Rory Priest and I'm a public educator with the Indianapolis Fire Department. I'm at the Firefighters Museum at the local 416. Let's see, where did we finish off? I think the dragon was coming inside for tea. I think, here we go, perfect. So, we had carrots and apples, thick slices of ham with fresh homemade biscuits and strawberry jam, cold glasses of milk, and a great big dill pickle. But the pepper we sprinkled sure made my nose tickle. Then, the dragon's nose twitched and he started to wheeze. His eyes misted up and he blew a great sneeze. Achoo! went the dragon. See, that's where the dragon is sneezing. Well, we all know what happens when dragons achoo. Flames shot from his mouth and from both nostrils too. Our tablecloth sparked and then burst into flame and the curtains that hung right beside did the same. The smoke alarm rang, what a loud piercing sound, and meant get out fast so I dropped to the ground. The room filled with smoke as I crawled on the floor and started to make my way to the front door. The dragon got scared and decided to hide, but I knew when there's fire, we must get outside. I grabbed his thick tail, and with one mighty tug, I pulled that big dragon from under the rug. See, that's the dragon hiding. We must never hide if we're in a fire. We must go outside. But Clara, I think my friend Clara, she wants to finish the book. Clara, can you do that for me? Thanks, Rory. I'm Clara. I'm a public educator with the Indianapolis Fire Department. We're here in the classroom at Firefighters Survive Alive. I crept down the hallway and said, follow me. I know the way out. We must meet by the tree. So mom and the dragon I met there. Then that silly old dragon went back for his bear. We ran up and caught him and I wouldn't let go. And I said, listen, dragon, here's what you should know. Don't ever go back. That just will not do. We can get a new bear, but we can't replace you. Since the fire was burning inside our home, we went to the neighbors to borrow the phone. Mom knew what to do and said, calm and clear. Here's our full street address. Send the fire trucks here. Now my friend Kyron, he's gonna read some pages to you. Here you go, Kyron. 
Thank you, Clara. Hi, I'm Kyron, and we are going to pick up where Clara left off. Let's get started. Before very long, down our street they came sailing, with bright red flashing lights and loud sirens wailing. The fire crew rushed to start on their task. They were dressed in big boots and wore helmets and masks. They hooked up the hose and ran into the house, where they sprayed streams of water in order to douse. The table, the curtains, our lovely snack too, and it didn't take long till the fire was through. The fire chief called out the door with a shout. The smoke made a mess, but the fire is out. My poor friend the dragon knew he was to blame, so he hung down his head and wept great tears of shame. One of the fire crew said, don't be sad, you knew what to do, and of that we're quite glad. You got out safely, and that's really what matters. Then she took us to see the big pump truck and ladders. The dragon put on a shiny red hat, and I asked to see where the fire crew sat. She showed us the siren, the hoses and lights, and the ladders they climb up to reach higher heights. The rest of the fire crew checked all their rooms while the fan in the door blew out gray smoke and fumes. Then the dragon and I sat down for a while. I reached up and hugged him. He, great, he gave a great smile. The next time the dragon and I want to play, we'll pack up a picnic and go to the bay. We are friends, tried and true, the best we can be, and I'll never again invite dragons for tea. All right, everyone, well, this includes our book on, on No Dragons for Tea. Thank you for joining us, but stay tuned for a message from our friend George. Thanks, Kyron. Hi, friends. My name is George, and I'm a certified public educator with the Indianapolis Fire Department. Wasn't that a wonderful book? Thanks for reading along with us. But I'd like to take just a couple of minutes to talk about some safety tips for you and your friends and family. First thing, we need to talk about an escape plan. An escape plan has to have some important things. Can we talk about what those are? Great, I'm glad you said yes. An escape plan has to have two ways out of each room and a meeting place outside. Now we'll talk about meeting places in just a minute. But an escape plan, your first way out should always be an exit door because it's the quickest, easiest, and safest way out of any room, even if you have a fire. The second way could be our window, but we need to talk to grown-ups about windows before we try to use them because windows can be very dangerous and there are many reasons they may not want us to go out. But remember, don't ever hide. If you can't get out, go to the window, make as much noise as you can, holler, flash a flashlight, or, a whist or use a whistle to draw attention to yourself so the firefighters can come get you out. Once we're outside of a burning building, we never ever go back in for anything. You stay at that meeting place. A meeting place has to be something that's far enough away from the house that everybody knows where it is, but you're out of the way of the firefighter so nobody gets hurt. And friends, if you need help with your escape plan, don't hesitate to give us a call at Firefighter Survival Live, a program with the Indianapolis Fire Department at 317-327. 6707. Or if you need a free smoke alarm and you're in the Indianapolis area, you can call 317-327-6093 or go to indy.gov slash IFD. That's all for now, friends. Don't forget to give us a like and share. Bye-bye.